So, figure 3 shows a vertical cylindrical tank of high 200 centimeters containing water. Water is leaking from a hole P on the side of the tank. So here is a hole P. So this looks like a, a derivative equation or a differential equation. So at time t minutes after the leaking starts, the height of the water in the tank is h centimeters. So this is the current height at the moment. Okay. The height h centimeters of the water in the tank satisfies the differential equation. All right, so we have this right here. And just to make it clear, this height occurs at some time t. Okay, so this is when it happens. So given that h equals 130, the height of the water is falling at a rate of 1.1 centimeters per minute. So here is the key word. So because it states that it's falling, in other words, there's a decrease at this rate, this means that the derivative of h respect to t is going to be a negative 1.1. That's what it means, the height decreasing at this time. So we can say, therefore, dh over dt is going to be minus 1.1. And we, all we have to do is find the value k. So it'll be 1.1 equals k times height, which is 130. So 130 take away 9 is 1 to 1, all to the power of half. And that's it, guys. So k is going to equal minus 1.1 over the square root of 121. And I think I know the answer mentally, but <laughs> I don't want to take that risk. But yeah, you actually get the answer should be minus 0.1. That's it. That's literally your value K. Okay, guys, here we go. Part B. So, given that the tank was full of water when the leaking started, where our derived differential equation is given by this, where K is minus 0 0.1 and H is the height, solve the differential equation with your value of K being minus 0 0.1 to find the value of T when H is 50. Okay, so first thing we have to do is pretty much uh, figure out how to solve this differential equation. Well, the key idea is that we need to move all the h terms with the dh and all the non, and all the t terms, or well, in this case, non-h terms to t. So let's let's go ahead and move this equation. So what we could do is firstly times dt across and divide by h minus nine power half. So we should have uh, dh over h minus nine to the power of half. And because we got h and dh in the same place, we can now pop in the integral sign. And same thing here. So now we've got k times dt, and k we know is negative 0 0.1. So I'm going to go ahead and write that now. So this would be negative 0 0.1 dt. And I can just put well, an integral sign here, plus c, because this is just a constant, and integral dt is just well t. Now let's do this. So how to integrate this bottom equation? Well, if you're not sure, I would just use um, substitution. So let u equal h minus 9. So on the side, a little working out. So just say let u equal h minus 9. Therefore, du equals, and then differentiate this, will give you dh. Easy stuff. Not bad. So now all you have to do is really know is that we can replace h minus 9 with u and dh with du. So nothing really changes. So now we've got the integral of, um, and I'm going to move, make this 1 over u to the power of half du. And just rewriting this again, this can be the same. This is the same as u to the power of negative half, because you can just raise the power up and put a negative sign. And this is going to equal to, and the right hand side would be minus 0 0.1, and integral dt would just be t, and hence plus c. Now, evaluating the left side, integrating this one is easy. You just raise the power up by 1 and then just drop it down. So it's just going to be power of a half over half, which is the same as. 2 times u to the power of half. Okay, so far so good, not bad, not bad at all. Now, one thing we have to really spot is this sentence here. So remember it says, given that the tank, oops, wrong one. Given that the tank was full of water when the leak in started, so that tells us that because the tank was full, it was at a height of 200, and this began at, as soon as the leak started, or, and this would be at time zero. This is just the initial point. So let's plug in these values here, because then we can actually find a value of c. So when t is 0 and h is 200, so when h is 200, this means u equals 200 take away 9, which is 191. So we're going to have, therefore, u times, and power half makes the square root, square root of 191 equals 0 point, minus 0 0.1 times, times um, 0, which is going to give us 0 plus c. So therefore, 
c must be uh, 2 root 191. Let me see if I can simplify that, but I don't think I can. Nope, so c is 2 root 191. Okay, good. Now, rewrite this whole equation now back in, so we're going to delete all of this. Um, delete. Okay, so this will give us plus 2 root 191. Okay, so almost done here, guys. Almost done. Okay, so now all you have to do is literally plug in your other initial condition, which is um, the value of t when h is 20. So that's fine. This is actually the easy part. This is just simple algebra. So when t when h is 20, this means that u is going to be 20 take uh, 50 take away 9, which is 41. So we're going to have 2 times the square root of 41, because u to the power half, equals minus 0 0.1 t plus 2 root 191. And just some, a quick little algebra, and making t the subject, you should, you should basically subtract 2 root 191 across and divide them by 0 0.1, so something like this, minus 2 root 191 over negative 0 0.1, you should get a t value of... Um, 148 to 3 significant figures.